welcome to my demo room. Um, I am going to do the demo that we were going to do in class. This is probably exactly how you would have seen it in class anyway. I just can't look over at your screen and ask and have any questions. So if you have questions, um, let me know. Um, send me a text, send me an email, and I will try to get your questions answered. So I'm going to stand in front of the um, light here so that hopefully you can see. Um, this I'm just going to show you regular Foley, what you've already um, been used to seeing. Um, and I'm going to go over a little bit of um, the uh, troubleshooting that I wanted to show you. So regular Foley right now, two lumens, um, one for the balloon, one for the urine catheter. Um, when you put the catheter bags on there, a lot of the catheter bags these days will now have a um, irrigation port or a collection sample port on them. Um, so it's a lure lock that you can put a needle on. Um, so I'm just gonna hook this Foley up. And um, if you ever needed to irrigate a Foley um, or do a collection sample, you can do it from here. Um, best practice though is to disconnect the Foley and do your irrigation through this end. Um, but if you have a large, um, a 60, um, this is generally your irrigation. It's the same as the NG tube um, care kit that you would um, use for giving NG tubes or anything, but you would use a separate one for a Foley. So if you have another one, if one of them was used for NG tube meds or anything, do not reuse that irrigation. This is for, um, you'd be using a separate one for a Foley catheter that had sterile urine in it. Um, if you need to, draw anything out of here um, to maybe get a sample um, or anything like that. What we would do is we would clamp it. This one is missing its clamp, um, but they have different clamps. You would want to clamp the drainage so that drainage doesn't get out and um, you could pull catheter, you could pull urine out of there. So if you need to get a urine catheter um, sample or a urinalysis or a urine culture, um, you could clean this port with um, chlorhexidine, let it dry, and then put on a syringe. Um, the syringes fit on there just like a regular, um, a regular uh, syringe, and you can pull something out of the catheter. Um, you can also irrigate through this, but I'm going to tell you that if you need to irrigate, you're going to have to irrigate with about 30 to 60 milliliters of sterile saline. Um, you can irrigate a catheter through this, and the reason we would need to irrigate a catheter is if this catheter gets obstructed. You might have an obstruction here where maybe there's something, a clump of something over the... Um, the hole there in the drainage area that's on the end of the Foley, you may have a clump of something actually in the actual catheter that is preventing drainage from coming out into the tube. Um, so if you are going to irrigate, what we are going to do is, I'm not gonna show you, I don't have a 60 milliliter syringe. If I had a 60 milliliter lure lock, which is the twist on, and if I had a 60 milliliter lure lock syringe, I could go ahead and irrigate from this port. I would need to clamp this off and then push the fluid in this way. So I could have 60 milliliters of sterile saline, clean this with chlorhexidine, and if this was a 60 milliliter syringe, I could go ahead and if this is clamped, because if you're going to irrigate and this is not clamped, then your fluid will just run into the drainage bag. You're not actually irrigating the fully. You would have to clamp this end off and then you could irrigate this way through the fully. Um, another way to irrigate if you don't have a catheter with a lure lock or just for better force in actual irrigating. And someone said, so you're going to actually push something back into the bladder. Um, actually, it's, yeah, we would want to push it back into the bladder, then try to pull it down and um, get it stuck further in the catheter. So yes, we push it back into the bladder, let whatever it is dissolve up um, in the bladder, and then hopefully it will drain out. Um, so what you would do, oops, let me get my stuff, you'd have a sterile, um, a sterile, Tumi syringe, this is a, uh, not a Lurlock syringe, just a syringe that would fit in here. Like I said, it's the same as an NG tube and a sterile container for your water. So um, this would come in a sterile kit. I don't believe I have any longer the actual box that it comes in. Um, you would pull it out of its kit. 
um, you would get sterile saline for irrigation from the Omnicell or the control room. Um, and you would make sure that you put water in here sterilely. So you don't need the syringe or anything to be sterile. You just need to make sure that the tip of the syringe stays sterile. So you can hold this off to your side, fill this with your sterile saline, fill up this syringe with sterile saline. Now I'm not really going to inject sterile saline all through my floor because this really isn't in a bladder. Um, your syringe tip is staying sterile. You would disconnect this from the Foley drain. It will dribble. There's no way to clamp a Foley and you shouldn't clamp a Foley. So you want to go ahead and have this ready to go. Disconnect this from the drainage port and then just inject your sterile saline into there. If you are meeting resistance, um, gentle pressure, and try to get that obstruction, you could probably push pull a little bit but this is just irrigating. This is just trying to clean out this catheter. You're trying to push the obstruction off of the drainage ports and um, get it irrigated. Once you have irrigated it so that it is running, then you can hook up the catheter. If you cannot irrigate, if you cannot push um, any fluid in through there, then this catheter is probably not going to be usable anymore and you would have to remove it and put in a new one. I had to do that on a patient that had a really bad UTI. Um, he had a really bad UTI. He had come in with a, um, a catheter from a nursing home and he, we could not get that catheter to flush at all. We irrigated it. We first tried to irrigate it through the port and it wouldn't irrigate that way. We took it apart. We irrigated it this way. It wouldn't irrigate. We ended up having to remove and replace the Foley. But irrigating the Foley is a good way to get it to work. Um, let me show you one other thing. Let me, I'm going to borrow a part from Carl here. Sorry, Carl. All right, <laughs> I borrowed a part from Carl. This was, that was pretty rude. Um, what I am going to show you now is repositioning the Foley. And um, the reason I'm gonna show you repositioning the Foley on Carl's part is one, because I have Carl's part. Um, but I like the way it has this, this is where we would kind of screw it on to him here. But um, we're gonna say that this is the bladder. Once it is in past here, it's in the bladder and this is going to be the prostate or the urethral sphincter right there. So um, we're going to inflate this balloon with 10 cc's and this is water, 10 cc's of water. So what this is gonna do is it's going to sit on the urethral sphincter. It's going to um, keep fluid from flowing out of the bladder around the urethral sphincter there, and it will um, keep things from dripping out. Now, if you have drainage around the tip of the catheter um, or pain with the catheter, what happens a lot of times is this is, um, you know, Arizona, things do get dehydrated. Um, and after a certain amount of time when Foley's are in for a long, long time, or if they weren't inflated properly to begin with, um, these balloons kind of lose some of their air. So this is kind of a, do a half filled balloon. So it's a half filled balloon. Well, what can happen, and especially on an unsecured Foley or a loose urethral sphincter is that, okay, he gets out of bed, he tucked to the Foley, what happens is this cat, this balloon can get stuck in the urethral sphincter. So let me, because this is hard plastic, it's a little, let me pull this back a little bit and I'm gonna try and inflate the balloon here. Do you see how this is now stuck halfway in and halfway out of our urethral sphincter here? This is going to cause quite a bit of trauma to the urethral sphincter, having a balloon kind of pulled through it or half stuck in it, that every time you move around, it um, presses against the sphincter um, or it's sitting in the actual sphincter. Like I can't even, it's stuck in there. It won't let me pull it out. Um, so if that is happening, this sphincter will spasm, allowing some of the urine to get out of the bladder and dribble around the outside here and will cause quite a bit of pain. If you've ever had a UTI, that's your urethral sphincter spasming, um, that area spasming, trying to get urine out and get the bacteria out. Um, here, this is an amazingly painful thing. So what we wanna do is we want to 
advance this. This thing has gotten into the urethral sphincter, causing quite a bit of pain. And the easiest way to do that is to deflate the balloon. So we are going to deflate the balloon. We don't want to pull the catheter out. We just want to deflate the balloon. You're going to take the remainder of the catheter. Sorry, Carl's part. Clean it with chlorhexidine or betadine without pulling it out. It's still in the bladder there. We're going to clean this area with betadine or chlorhexidine um, so that when we insert fully, we are not inserting bacteria. We want to clean this catheter of any bacteria. Um, they make chlorhexidine swabs, um, alcohol swabs, anything that will clean this catheter off. And I would clean the whole entire catheter. Um, and then you can reinsert this. It should go in. You already have gotten it past the prostate. It should just be a matter of reinserting it. So we want to reinsert this as far as we can. And then reinflate the balloon to its full. So you deflated the balloon first. Clean the catheter. And now we are going to reinflate the balloon to its full. 10 milliliters, and you'll be surprised that a lot of these catheters, when you go to DC them or pull them out, they don't have a full 10 cc's in there. And now you have a full balloon against a thing. So that happens a lot of times. Um, probably, I was telling the story of my, um, during lecture, my uh, cardiac surgery patient that had um, had an obstructed bladder. And so I think what happened to this guy was I think when it entered, oop, when they got the catheter in, I think somehow this um, tip ended up getting stuck or um, bent. And I think what happened was that it was bent, and I don't know how these happen in bladders, but I think it was bent on, in on itself, kind of along this way. Um, and then when it's bent in on itself, it can't, it kind of clamps itself off. So even if you, um, if it gets bent in the bladder, maybe it runs up against a bladder obstruction or maybe you have odd anatomy. Um, but you can blow up the balloon and it's in the bladder. But if it's sitting up against, oof, normally it should be open with its drainage catheters. But if it is um, bent up on itself, that it is kinked, it won't drain. Um, and the easiest way to fix it was we deflated the balloon, cleaned the catheter, and then just reinserted it all the way. However we reinserted it, it became unclamped and um, then urine started to drain out of it. So if you have urine in your bladder on your bladder scan, um, reposition your Foley, irrigate your Foley, do something to keep this clear because if it's not clear, um, it's not going to drain and it's gonna cause bladder retention and you could have further kidney damage. So make sure that your urine is clear. Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, the continuous bladder irrigation here, Carl, you can have your part now. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of, this is the triple lumen that we are talking about. Lumens just mean three ports. Um, this has an extra port. This is a regular urine catheter, has the drainage port and a balloon port. This one now has a balloon port, a drainage port and an irrigation port. Um, you can see how it's much, much bigger than, or wider than the other, than a regular standard urinary catheter. Um, and the reason is, is when these are in doing bladder irrigation, we know there's debris, it's a large bore. Yes, to do bladder irrigation on the patient that has bladder irrigation ordered, you will have to remove a standard Foley and put in a continuous bladder irrigation Foley. If you put this catheter in to a patient, um, it will drain out both holes. Um, there is no stopcock for this hole. So the only, you can't leave this in if you're not running continuous bladder irrigation. Um, there's no way to clamp it. I've seen people clamp it with um, hemostat clamps and leave those in the bed. Um, it's just lazy. Take this out and put in a regular catheter if they need to maintain a catheter and you're not on CBI. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to put this catheter in the same way you would put in a regular catheter, but it is large bore. Please lube it all the way up. And it has a 30 milliliter balloon. So I don't know if you can see. 
Uh, see if it's try and get it to focus here on the balloon. It doesn't want to focus. Um, this says 30 milliliters on it. It doesn't want to focus. It wants to focus on something far away. So um, this is 30 milliliters. So when we blow up this balloon, it is much, much larger. And I'm actually going to put this balloon into a bloody bladder. Um, don't do this at home, kids. You'll make a mess. I'll probably make a mess, too. I'm going to take a little, little bucket for my mess. Um, I'm going to sterilely put in this catheter into my bloody bladder and blow up the balloon. So this is a 10 milliliter syringe. Um, I will need to blow it up three times to get 30 milliliters in there. And the reason it has such a large um, balloon is it's large bore and we don't want anything um, leaking out around it. So let me get my 30 milliliters in here. And now we have a balloon. So look, it's not leaking because the balloon's, oh, it's leaking a little bit. The balloon's doing its job there. I don't have a urethral sphincter there. I have a big wide open sphincter, but it is keeping my, um, my bladder from leaking. So this is my bloody bladder. A real bloody bladder um, or had blood in there would have a lot of clots and a lot of clogs in there, um, but we are going to clear and irrigate this blood out. So I have my, my bladder. Um, you are still going to put a regular Foley drainage bag. They do have three liter Foley drainage bags. This is going to be a lot. This is going to be continuous fluid running through here. So um, a large bag, um, the biggest bag you can find because you're going to have a lot of drainage out. Um, go ahead and hook this up to the drainage port and then you will start draining your urine as long as it's not so you can see here it's draining my red urine out of there um, what you're going to need now is a irrigation tubing to go into that size so I have some irrigation tubing here um, this one's called two bag universal spike irrigation set it's called irrigation set I'm going to show you what it looks like I have some open irrigation tubing. Um, this looks very much like blood transfusion tubing, except that it's really, really wide. Um, let me see if I have some IV tubing. I think I have IV tubing back here. So you can see how much wider it is than IV tubing. This is regular IV tubing, and this is irrigation tubing. So a lot, lot wider. Um, but it is just tubing. These are the irrigation bags, very similar. I'm not gonna puncture this one because it's, it's huge. Um, this is a uh, three liter bag of saline. They sometimes even have boxes of saline, four or five liter boxes, because you are continuously running fluid into a bladder to irrigate it. Um, so you're gonna be using a lot of fluid as irrigation fluid. So um, you're going to use probably a couple of these. I'm going to hang up this bag just because it weighs a ton. Um, a three liter bag weighs a lot. I'm weak. Um, and then I'm going to put up just a regular, let's see, a smaller bag. I only have a little 500 milliliter bag. But pretend these are two big uh, liter bags. So I have two three liter bags. And you have two ports. The reason you have two ports is one's open and one's closed. Again, before we spike these, I'm closing everything. Um, and then you're gonna spike your two bags. What you're gonna do is you're gonna let one bag run, and then when that bag is over, you can clamp that bag, run the second bag, and you have time to change the first bag. Um, I'm just gonna hook this up real quick to my tiny bag so you can see how it runs and how we hook it up. It's clamped, so it's not gonna run right now. Get up there. And I would hook my other end into my second bag. So now I know I'm gonna run one bag. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and prime this just like regular IV tubing. 
Um, I'm going to prime this like I would prime regular IV tubing, but it's just big, thick IV tubing. So like regular IV tubing, let's keep it under control. We're going to clamp this down. We're going to open up one of our clamps. And you can see that it will start priming. I'm going to fill up this drip chamber just like you would on a regular drip chamber. And then I'm going to prime this through. It doesn't matter so much if you have a ton of air. Oh, it worked. Um, if you have a ton of air in this line, because we are just flushing the bladder, the bladder can have air in it. It won't damage anything to have air in it. So now this has stayed sterile the whole time, just like the end of a regular IV tubing. And we're going to put it into this area here. So the complete setup is, we're going to say our bladder our person, our catheter, and then we have a drainage bag and a irrigation bag. So here's our irrigation bag, it's clamped right now, and here is our drainage. So we are letting it drain. I'm going to tip this bottle. I'm going to let this drain. Okay, let me see if I can get the bottle here. And then I am going to start my irrigation. And what is happening here, I'm going to start this irrigation so you can see it's dripping pretty fast here. It's dripping pretty fast here. And what that irrigation is doing is the irrigation is going into the bladder and then it is draining out there. There is no set rate for this. Um, what this should be is this should always be running at either a fast drip or a constant drip. What you are looking for is for your drainage coming out of here to be almost this color. Do you see how it's a very pale pink? This means that whatever, so if you had frank blood coming out of here, as soon as you started running irrigant, um, it would start thinning out in color. You would increase the rate of the irrigant until the drainage was this color. You don't want it to be frank blood. You don't want it to be that clear. If it's perfectly clear, just like the, then all you're draining out is irrigant. You're not really cleaning anything out. So the irrigant is constantly running through here and um, making this, I guess, what's the word, diluted out so that we are constantly running um, fluid into this bladder and eventually we will dilute out any blood or bleeding that is happening and you can see that all of this stuff is going into the urine bag here so turn my urine bag around you can see that all of the irrigant plus any urine output that was in the bladder is now coming out into the drainage bag and that is what you're doing with cbi um, on our patient that was getting a bag of fluid that had amphotericin in it what we are doing is constantly running the amphotericin just into that bladder to bathe the bladder with antibiotic, kill off bacteria, and then drain them out into the bag. Uh, the important thing to remember with continuous bladder irrigation is that if this is ever fully running in and nothing is draining out, so let's say we clamp this and we are letting irrigant run into this system. So if irrigant is running into this bladder, so I'm going to run a ton of irrigant into this bladder, and the bladder drainage is clamped. What is eventually going to happen to this bladder is it's going to fill up with urine and irrigant. And if this is constantly kept clamped, irrigant will continue to run until this bladder becomes so filled that it distends and pops. So you always need to make sure that your drainage is open and clear so that this has a clear path to drain out. Um, if this becomes clamped at all, then you run the risk of this irrigant continuing to run into the bladder and filling the bladder completely full to bursting. So always make sure it is draining. Um, make sure you are looking at the urine output and make sure that it is constantly draining. Um, like I said, if this ever stops running in, um, you might have an occlusion that is preventing the irrigant from getting in through the irrigation catheter. You can get um, occlusions in this catheter and you would have to shut the whole system down 
disconnect um, your drainage bag and manually irrigate this catheter. So anyway, CBI setting it up, the, the busy, I mean, the hard part is putting in this big giant catheter um, into your patient. Um, but once you get the catheter into the patient, all that you need to do is make sure that you have, and so I would get ready before you get ready to do all this, before you put the catheter in, make sure you have your irrigation bags and your irrigation tubing ready. Because once you put the catheter in, um, you really need to hook that irrigation tubing up right away because otherwise the catheter will drain out of the irrigation tubing. Um, so the first steps should really be getting um, calling central supply, um, calling your charge nurse or whatever to get your irrigate bags and to get your irrigation tubing. It is special tubing. It's not regular IV tubing. Um, it's special irrigation tubing, and it's just larger bore than regular IV tubing. Could you use IV tubing? I guess in a pinch you could use IV tubing, but it's not going to deliver the high volumes of irrigation that you're going to need to really adequately irrigate the bladder. Um, so get the irrigation tubing, get your bags, get those ready, get that primed, and then put in your Foley catheter, and then hook up a drainage bag, hook up your irrigation tubing, and then open your irrigation tubing and let that run until your urine becomes pale pink and then you just keep monitoring it. Make sure that it is always draining. Make sure that this is always running. And you can change the rate of the irrigant. Um, if this urine starts becoming pale clear, um, you can slow the irrigant down. You don't need to have that much irrigant running through there. But if this starts to become thick, clotty, um, bloody, you would want to increase your irrigation to keep things diluted. So that is continuous bladder irrigation in a quick nutshell. Um, I do believe we kind of talked about advancing the Foley. I don't think I have any other um, big pinpoints on the Foley. Um, let me know if you have any questions on this. Um, and I do have, we can set up, um, I will bring this to um, Skills Day. So if you would like to set up continuous bladder irrigation, you could do that during Skills Day. So, oh, almost lost all of my stuff onto the floor. Um, have a good rest of your day. And I will see you hopefully at a skills lab or um, online. Talk to you soon. Bye.